Welcome to a special Friday edition of the Pantheler Show. It's our, our Friday conversation that we tend to do every now and then here on youtube.com slash pantheler.com. You know, last week we talked to Kalaja Kansi, Pitt's defensive tackle. I had a great conversation with him about some of the things he's doing off the field in addition to his work on the field, obviously, which is pretty prominent. Uh, but we talked to him a little bit about his work off the field and how he's using NIL deals to um, do some some work and help in the community. And this week we have sort of a similar conversation. Another pit defensive lineman talking a lot about on the field stuff and off the field stuff. It's redshirt senior, super senior, actually, Deslin Alexander. And I'm really excited to have him um, join the show. He's an interesting guy, maybe even more interesting than I realized. I, I can remember back to his recruitment in the class of 2017, which was a pretty prominent class for Pitt. I mean, you look at the guys in that 2017 recruiting class, Kenny Pickett, obviously. Um, Damari Mathis was in that class. Jason Pinnock was in that class. Paris Ford was in that class. Deslin Alexander was in that class. Uh, a bunch of those offensive linemen, Gabe Hoy and Owen Drexel and Carter Warren were in that class. Um, you know, some other guys, AJ Davis and Todd Sibley were in that class. And, and you can kind of run down the list. It was supposed to be a big tight end class, actually, but I won't, uh, we, we won't go down that path because this is about Deslin Alexander today. And you know, I, I respected, I, I've sort of respected him throughout his career. I think he's just a really solid player, a solid teammate, a solid leader. He stepped in and moved to defensive tackle when that's what the team needed him to do. Um, when Rashad Weaver got hurt in, I think it was 2019, he came in, you know, he stepped up and became a, a starter and, and I think filled in admirably uh, at that position and just has, he just puts his head down. Uh, you know, he's been, a, a, like I say, a team leader for the past few years. And an important part of this defensive line, this defense, and I think this roster overall. And so I was excited to talk to him because, you know, obviously about the football stuff and go back to some of the recruiting conversations and things like that. But also, he does a lot off the field and he's heavily involved in, in a number of projects. I'm going to let you, you know, hear from him about that. Uh, but he was recently, earlier this week, named to the AFCA, the uh, All State Good Works team, which is. Um, it's not the Heisman, but it's it's a great recognition of the things you do off the field and the impact you're making on the community. And Deslin Alexander, I think once you hear some of the things that he's doing, you'll agree that he's a deserving uh, honoree for that particular award. So I'm not gonna um, you know I'm not gonna ramble on any more about this. Uh, I just have a lot of res respect from De for Deslin Alexander, and I think after you listen to this conversation with him, you probably will too. So without further ado, please welcome to the Panther Show. Pitt defensive end, Deslin Alexander. And Deslin, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, I'm really glad to have you uh, on the show. I've been uh, looking forward to talking to you. I feel like you've been around Pitt for a long time, but how, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. Nice. Now, uh, the news came out earlier this week that you were named to the uh, All-State AFCA Good Works team, which is a pretty cool honor. Um, you know, uh, there have been other Pitt guys who have been named to that team, but was that something that was on your radar? Were you surprised when they told you about this? And what, what was your reaction? Uh, that was a, that was something I was thinking about, but it was, it was definitely an honor to receive an award like that. Um, and a lot of things I do in the community, I don't do it for a award. I just do it, you know, because it's the right thing to do. Uh, so I am grateful for the award. Though. I, it's interesting. Um, when they put out the press release about you being named to the, the Good Works team, there's, I think you're the seventh pit player who's, who's gotten that honor. And like five out of those seven have been since 2015. Uh, is there just, is there kind of an atmosphere around the program now of, of trying to help, of trying to give back? Yeah, I definitely want to say that's something, you know, we speak about in the facility. Like we're very blessed uh, to have what we have. Um, and we don't take that for granted. And something we always preach is always helping others, uh, doing work in community. So that's something we do as a team which I think makes our team closer also. Yeah. Well, I want to talk about a few of the things you've done. Um, there's the Fifth Down Initiative. Can you tell me about that? What's involved with that program? Yeah, so I'm originally from Cafe in Haiti, and I was born there. And uh, when NIO news broke, um, we can do things. Uh, you've seen Cal, Cal's kids. Cal did something great with NIO, and I wanted to do something similar. Uh, so being from Haiti um, and being born there, knowing that where I'm from, like, a lot of the kids don't have a lot of the same opportunities I have. And I just wanted to, you know, use my platform to give back to those kids. And so I partnered with Pittsburgh Kid Foundation and um, to provide food, water, and nutrition, um, food, water, and um, for the kids back in Haiti. Mm -hmm. 
when did uh when did you you and your family leave haiti so i was four years old when i left haiti wow wow do you have any memories of that i mean that's a long time ago but do, do you have yeah, i've actually memories? been back a few times today okay. uh since but i do have a lot of family uh still in haiti oh wow okay um and then you you moved to florida right is that mm -hmm. directly to florida yeah so i i live in south florida uh deerfield beach bottom beach area Okay. How, how many times have you been back to Haiti, you think? I've been back at least four times. A lot when I was uh, a lot younger. When I was eight, nine years old before high school. Right. So just going back with family to visit family, that kind of thing? Yep. Okay. I know in, in past years, and it probably I don't know if it's happened in the last few years, but Pitt, you know, Pitt Athletics would organize a a mission trip to Haiti. Do, do they still do that? Have you got, did you ever get a chance to participate in one of those? Yeah, Mark Steffi runs that. And that's something that, you know, we actually, in the works before COVID, uh, try to set up a trip. So ever since COVID, uh, they haven't been back. Okay. Uh, have you gotten, um, I, I know you said you, you helped sort of raise, raise money, raise supplies, that kind of thing. Have you been part of actually delivering it to Haiti? Have you gotten to go down and kind of see some of your works uh, being put so in action? That's actually part of the end of the trip. That's something we're planning to do at the end of the trip is take a Haiti, uh, see some kids uh, down to Haiti. Okay. And that's all part of like an NIL program? Uh, so it's not part of an NIL program. Um, like I just partnered with Pittsburgh Kids Foundation and then, you know, that's within us, us talking and, and seeing what we want to do. I just thought it'd be beneficial to just take, to take the trip and, you know, see it, you know, be on the ground and help the kids out there. That sure. sure. Uh, I, I know, I, I believe you work with Alliance 412. Were they instrumental in kind of helping organize this and, and facilitate it? Yep. Alliance 412 has been really good, you know, helping me uh, plan out and uh, certain things about uh, Fifth Down, you know, just helping me, you know, get things together. So they've been really good and helpful. Nice. Now, I know you also work with, um, I think it's the Divine Mercy Church downtown, the Red Door Program. What, mm -hmm. What's that? Can you tell us about that? Yeah, so I've had some time, you know, getting some food uh, ready for the people who come by, um, you know, just delivering clothes to people. And that's, I mean, that's really kind of a, it's being part of the city, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, do, is, is Pittsburgh sort of an adopted home for you now? I mean, you're from Haiti, you lived in South Florida. You've been in Pittsburgh for what five years now. Uh, I mean, does it feel like sort of a, a second or maybe a third home for you at this point? Yeah, Pittsburgh's actually definitely another home for me. And that's why I think it's important for me to get out there and you know and make an impact to a place where I call home, you know, uh to see a better future. Do you encourage have you been able to kind of rally your teammates? Like, come on, come come downtown with me. We're gonna we're gonna help, you know, feed the homeless and deliver, you know, clothes to people in need. Definitely. And that's something a lot of guys like doing that thing, um, those type of things. And, you know, we do an event every year um, as a team. So a lot of guys uh, have the opportunity to go out in the community also. Mm -hmm. I, I wanted to, you know, obviously we want to talk a little bit about some football stuff, but I was thinking back to when you were getting recruited. I mean, it was probably you were in the class of 2017. So you're getting recruited in 2016. That's a long time ago, but I think I remember talking to you at the time and you were committed to NC State. Uh, and then just kind of really late in the process, uh, took an official visit to Pitt and, and flipped to Pitt. And then I think enrolled in January, unless I'm mistaken. What do you remember? I mean, again, that's close to six years ago. But what do you remember about that process, being with NC State and then kind of making that decision to sort of flip uh, really late in the process? I actually really do. I remember um, we had a phone call also when I committed. Um, but that process was... Uh, it's pretty crazy. Like thinking back on it, I remember I had probably a week to make a decision. So I took the NC State visit and then I took Pitt and uh, just through the visit, like I like, you know, when you know, you really know, like just everything felt right. You know, being in the city at the time, um, coaches, it felt like home. So that's what helped me make the decision to come to Pittsburgh. And I'm very glad I did. I mean, you had, you had been committed to NC State for a little while. Do you remember what kind of inspired you to even take the visit to Pitt to, to go up and check it out? Yeah, I just know, you know I was re recruited very uh, hard by Pitt, and Pitt was one of my top schools. So I just know I've always would make this visit. And then when I got here, uh, you know, it sold itself. Like, it was, this is where I need to be. Was that a tough phone call to then make to the, the NC State guys and say, hey, I have you know, some bad news here? 
Yeah, I still remember that. I said in my coach office making that phone call, but I made the right decision. Well, then when you were a freshman, NC State came to, I mean, we called it Heinz Field at that point. Any any handshakes there? Any hey, coach, uh, what you doing? Or they, they not have much to say to you after the game? Or? Yeah, I, I shake, um, I shake uh, Coach Doran's hand. Um, and then Coach George at the time, uh, who recruited me. So it was always, it was just good energy there. Mm -hmm. When I was uh, looking that up, I, I, you know, I was reading through some of those old, old articles, but I was looking it up and I, I found that 2017 recruiting class you were part of. And I mean, there's some, some names in that class. There's Kenny Pickett, there's Damari Mathis, there's, you know, Jason Pinnock and Jalen Twyman Paris Ford. You guys had, you know, obviously in yourself, I mean, the offensive linemen, there's a lot of guys who contributed, you know, out of that class, but there's only four of you left now. We were, we were talking before. It's you and and the three linemen, Carter Warren and Owen Drexel and Gabe Poy. I mean, you you feel like the old man on this team? I mean, you 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 and those three guys kind of feel like you've been around, you know, about as almost as long as the coaching staff at this point. Yeah, I definitely feel old, but you know, just looking back now, I'm very proud of uh, what that class has accomplished and to continue to accomplish. You know, guys work really hard and. And remember, like, I can remember just talking as young freshmen of things we aspire to do. And looking back now, what all we've done, um, I'm really proud. Is yeah. it funny to you when you see young guys come in? I mean, do you, do you kind of, you remember what it was like to be sort of that freshman who didn't know where anything was and, you know, had no idea what was going on most of the time? Right. That's why I always try to tell the guys, just keep your head up. You know, you're going to go through some, you know, some tough times, but at the end, you know, as long as you keep pushing, everything's going to be all right, you know, like, so that's something I always tell the young guys. Is there anybody that sticks out to you over that time? I mean, we're talking about, you know, this is your sixth season now. Is there anybody that sticks out to you over that time? It really remarkable how they grew. You know what I mean? You, you saw them coming as a freshman and, and by the time they were in their third or fourth year, it was almost like, wow, look at this guy. Look how mature he is. How, you know what I mean? Is there anybody who stands out to you for is making a real transformation like that? There's a bunch of guys. That's a really good question. Um, a lot of guys made a lot of improvement. Uh, Owen's definitely a guy, you know, seeing seeing what he came through, you know, staying down, playing behind Jimmy and, and really learning from Jimmy. Uh, Owen's definitely a guy, you know, I'm really proud of and, and seeing what he's been through, you know, coming up to. Do you, do you find yourself giving that talk to young players a lot of it's it's all right. You might have to wait a little bit. You might have to take it because you've seen guys like Owen who've come in and, and sat for a few years, you know, but then they went to before they get that opportunity. Do you find yourself giving that talk to young players pretty often? Yeah, all the time, you know, because with this college football, college football is very competitive and every freshman expects like, you know, to come and you know, have those aspirations to make an impact early. Um, and, you know, sometimes you got to wait your turn and, and continue working. So I do have that conversation pretty often. Now, I mean, as we've, we've said, you know, this is your sixth year. Uh, you and, and obviously Carter and, and Owen and Gabe made that decision to come back uh, for that extra year, that super senior year. What was it for you? What made you decide to, to come back and play one more year of college football? You know, just another opportunity to be with my brothers and uh, chase another ACC championship. Uh, so, like, this is like I love being around those guys and and knowing that you know those guys made a decision to come back, and I think it was the best decision for me also to come back. So, uh, it was really a good decision to come back. What was it a tough call? I mean, did did you spend a lot of time dwelling on it? I mean, what was that that decision making process like? And last December, last January, or, or earlier? I mean, when did you actually make the decision? Um, it, was, it was pretty tough knowing that I can leave and, and go up to down to the NFL. And um, so it was just me you know, talking to Coach Dudes and Coach Dudes making some phone calls and, and weighing out my options. Mm -hmm. You uh, there, there was that one year you played defensive tackle, right? When, when was that? I was trying to think of this. Was it 18 when you guys won? COVID? Was it the COVID year, 2020? Uh, actually, maybe, uh, I so think so. 2019, maybe? Or? Nin no, 19, I played D, yeah. That's right, because Rashad mm -hmm. Weaver got hurt. So it must have been, was it 2018, the year you guys won the, the Coastal? Mm-hmm. Okay. And you, um, 2020, I played a bit D tackle. Oh, did you play a bit there? Okay, because Rashad and Patrick were both back, so they had, uh, you, you got more opportunities there. Um, do, do you like that? Have you ever kind of gone to the coaches about making a permanent switch there, or are you just like, no, I'm an end, I got to stay out there? No, I like – being able to go inside and out and I see myself as a player that could play both. Um, so 
Did you have to do much like weight gain, weight loss? I mean, we always hear about Brian O'Neill when he bulked up to play like uh, tight end or move from tight end to offensive line, uh, adding all this weight. Did you have to do much? I mean, it seemed like you more or less kept the same size uh, between both. I kept the same size and like just being able to know the fundamentals of the tackle was easy to bump in and out, you know, in between plays, games. So I didn't have to get much weight. I'm always curious. I was thinking about this today, just kind of looking back over some of the games. You guys have that Delta defensive package you use on third down where you guys go to a three man line. Uh, how does that, I mean, not just the particulars of the Delta, but going from being an, an end uh, on a four man line to being an end on a three man line, how, how different are those two? How drastic of a change is that? Uh, it's definitely a, a change, but like knowing that it's pass and the O linemen are going backwards alone like you know it's not like knowing that you get the tee off and, and go make a play so that's what I love about it um you know you as a D lineman you love third and long you know because you get the get a chance to get in the backfield so it's not much of a difference. uh you know it's funny when you look back at Pitt um prior to 2017 and, and 18 when you guys really started coming on I mean the DNs didn't produce a whole lot 2014 15 16 I mean one price had a ton of sacks but there wasn't much beyond him and really, over the last four years, it's kind of become established that D end is like a, is one of the strengths of not just the defense but the team um, at Pitt. Do you feel like there's you know Do you feel like you're part of a, a legacy of of sort of creating this sort of you know what do you guys do? what do you guys, quarterback killers QBK and all this yeah. stuff? Do you do you feel like it, it, there's a legacy of D end and, and you're a part of that? Oh, definitely. Um, I remember when Coach Partridge first got because me and Coach Partridge got at the same time. Just seeing Coach Partridge help build, build his culture and like he has a high standard and things that he preaches and like what like the standards we have to meet every day. So um, it was great just seeing that. I never was able to um, get coached by Coach Sims, but just seeing what our line, our room has become, you know. Um, year after year, and, and the improvement we've made has been great. Like, it's, true, it's truly been tremendous. So, is it, is it really a case where like the standard just kind of keeps going up? Like, you know, yes. Shot and Patrick are all Americans, and then it just keeps going up from there. Definitely. I, I've forgotten that that Coach Partridge was hired right then in that like January of seventeen. I mean, what do you remember about your first impressions of him and kind of finding out? Oh, I'm gonna have this new D line coach. Yeah, I remember uh, when Coach Dudes told me, I was kind of bummed, but Coach Dudes probably was like, I'm going to get a guy that's even better. And he sure did. So I'm really uh, happy about that. I feel like that's always his line. He's like, yeah, yeah, we had to change this coach, but we're going to find somebody better. And he seems to do a pretty decent job at it, I guess. Yeah, he uh, does. I'm curious about this game last Saturday night, this Western Michigan game. I know you didn't play, but obviously you played last year. How much was there, I don't know if you want to call it revenge, but I mean, how satisfying was it to kind of get a win after the way it went last year? I know you guys uh, took it pretty hard when you lost to Western Michigan last year, particularly for the defense. How how satisfying was it to get that win and on Saturday night and really just control the game? I mean, the defense was was pretty much in control from the start. Uh, that's something, you know, we took personal from last year. Um, that's something that we know uh, what our standard is as a defense, as a team, and um, – so it was it was real good to just go out there and, and do what we're supposed to do and get a win. And now you guys uh, coming out of the non-conference here, you know, starting next week when you have Georgia Tech at home. I mean, uh, you know, and then it's just eight straight games of ACC play. Uh, you know, it seems like the conference is wide open once again. I mean, how excited are you to dive into conference play? And, uh, you know, how, you feel pretty good about uh, Pitt's chances in the, the Coastal and the ACC once again? Oh, definitely. Um, we're excited for it. Uh, we love ACC games, you know, uh, like the ACC games, like, you know, because what, what it means, you get a chance to every game, every week uh, to go one and uh to get in a championship again. So that's what we're chasing. All right. And then the last thing for you, Deslin, uh, I, I know you, you already graduated. I think you're in the, the business school now, right? Um, so, you know, I, the, the objective is the NFL, the goal is the NFL. Um, you know, whether that happens or not, kind of what's next for you whenever football ends, whether it's five years from now, 10 years from now, 15, whenever. What What's sort of your, your long-term uh, goals here? A long-term, I definitely want to get in the business uh, world, um, whether that's corporate, um, I'm not sure yet. Um, so something I'm still thinking about, but I definitely have a love for real estate. Um, so uh, definitely purchasing um, and selling real estate, anything to really do with real estate. Um, so that's something I'm very interested in.
would you stay in Pittsburgh or do you think uh, once, once you're done, you'll, you'll find a new home, find a fourth home or a fifth home or whatever number you'd be on at that point. Wherever I play next and then you continue to say, I like moving around. Um, I tell you what, coming to Pittsburgh, um, like I didn't know much about it at first. I was kind of iffy about it, you know, being here. Um, like I truly uh, have a love for Pittsburgh now and this will always be a home. So I'm excited right. for what the future uh, brings. Nice, nice. All right, Jaslyn, well, thanks so much for your time, man. We really appreciate it. Uh, you know, looking forward to seeing you back on the field soon and good luck uh, the rest of the season. Thank you so much. Thanks to Dozen Alexander for joining us on the show today. I, I thought it was, I mean, I think there was a lot in there. You know, we talked for quite a while there and, and from the NIL stuff and the off field stuff and the community stuff that he's doing with the, the um, Divine Mercy Church downtown and really his fifth down initiative and, and working with Haiti. I didn't know his backstory about being from Haiti and moving from Haiti when he was four. Um, you know, obviously I knew he was lived in South Florida and moved to Pittsburgh, but Pittsburgh has become, I guess, a third home for Deslin Alexander. And we'll see where his future path takes him. But I mean, I, I think it's hard to, uh, it's hard to root against a guy like that. I mean, when you when you listen to not just I mean, the things that he's doing off the field and then sort of his approach to his team. I mean, I feel like when I asked him, you know, do you do you find yourself sharing stories, you know, talking to the younger guys and helping the younger guys understand they might have to wait their turn? And I feel like there was an enthusiasm. It wasn't just, yeah, yeah, you know, I'll talk to some guys here or there. He was he was enthusiastic about it. He said, Yeah, I, I do. And, and it seemed like he really embraces that role. And and he's not the loudest guy on the team you know he's not the most flashy guy on the team um he's probably one that a lot of fans don't really talk about all that much i mean you talk about hobba baldonado or you know some of what john morgan has done uh you know he, he's definitely um you know uh, he likes to talk a lot off the field and i think he's been backing it up with this play on the field this year we talk about Dayon hayes because he's a young guy and he's he's local and and you know we kind of have that connection there a four-star prospect from from the city but deslin just goes out and works you know and and has made himself um i think a key piece of this team and a key component to this team and he's missed the last couple of games after getting hurt at the end of the west virginia game um i think he'll be back soon uh you know either rhode island or i would say almost certainly georgia tech and and Pitt will be better for having him on the field i think they were better for having him on the sidelines you know at the western michigan game when he traveled with the team but did not play i think he just he's he's important to the team in that way and i think the the you know kind of the uh, example he sets for the younger players both in how he conducts himself within the team and on the field but also what he does off the field i, I think that's the kind of thing that you can you can set that example and the younger players pick up on it and then when they reach that level that he's at, they set the example for the guys below him. It's that linkage that that really forms the culture of a program. And I think the culture of Pitt's program is really formed by guys like Deslin Alexander, who just just go to work, do the best that they can, and 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 try to carry that on to the things they do off the field. Which you know, you heard me say. I mean, <clears throat> Pitt has had seven guys named to the All State Good Works team. Um, I feel like going back to like 1992 or something like that, you know, or, or somewhere around that. I mean, it's, it stretches back a little ways, but five of them have been in the last like seven years since 2015. And I think that's part of the culture at Pitt. I think that's part of the environment and the atmosphere is one of giving back. And you heard it from Kalaja Kansi last week. And you heard it from Deslin Alexander this week. So hopefully you found that as interesting as I did. Hopefully you enjoyed that conversation as much as I did. Um, I know I like talking to Deslin. That was, uh, I thought that was a good convo. And um, you know, like I said, we look forward to seeing him back on the field soon. Listen, if you, uh, you know, we don't post these conversation videos every week. Two weeks ago, we had Dior Johnson. Last week, Kalaja Kansi. Obviously, this week, Deslin Alexandra. We'll see if we have one next week. I'm not entirely sure. Just sort of, we put these together when the situation merits, you know, when we have an opportunity to do so. If you want to make sure you don't miss anything, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications, and that way you'll get an alert every time we post a new video or we go live for the live Panther Alert show on Wednesday nights or our post-game show after the games. You don't know exact start times for those post-game shows, but if you're subscribed to our YouTube channel and you turn on notifications, you'll get an alert whenever we go live, so you won't miss it. It helps you. <laughs> it helps you stay on top of our content. We produce and we uh, or when we release a new Morning Pit video every day, Monday through Friday, 
you know, it's usually out by about seven, but if you want to make sure you know when it's out, you want to get a reminder, subscribe to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash pantherlaricom. Hit that like button on this video. Smash the like button, as the kids are wont to say. And then, of course, check out pantherlair.com, panther-lair.com, pittsburgh.rivals.com for all the pit coverage that you want, football, basketball, recruiting, articles, interviews, analysis, slideshows, videos, all that stuff and conversation and discussion on the pantherlair.com message boards. Panther-lair.com, pittsburgh.rivals.com. Thanks so much for watching this video. We appreciate it. Thanks again to Deslin Alexander for joining us. Um, and yeah, we appreciate you uh, for checking it out. Like the video, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and we'll be back with more pit content right here on youtube.com slash pantherlair.com.